Today, I want to share with you the Budapest Gambit, an aggressive and exciting chess opening. It is usually difficult to come up with an aggressive opening against White's Queen's pawn move, pawn to d4. The Budapest Gambit isn't just about one trap, whether it works or not, you can still create a strong attack. By the end, you'll see its real power and feel confident using it in your own games. Now, with the move pawn to e5, you obviously allow your opponent to capture the pawn. In most cases, they will take it, though a little later I will explain what to do if they do not. If white captures this pawn on e5, it immediately attacks your knight, so you respond with knight to g4, aiming to recapture the pawn with your knight on the following move. Usually, white will try to defend it in one way or another. For example, if they play knight to f3, defending the pawn with their own knight from f3, I recommend that you adopt a gambit style. You play pawn to d6, not even trying to win the pawn back. Instead, you are ready to trade it off while gaining a lead in development, allowing you to quickly complete your development and begin attacking. At this point, there is also a nice tactical trap along the way. Because your knight on g4 is positioned so close to white's pieces, it can feel unpleasant for them, and they may try to push it back by advancing pawn to h3. It looks like your knight must retreat, but in reality, you have a powerful tactical shot. Knight captures pawn on f2, forking the queen and the rook, and from there, you win the game. Therefore, the knight needs to be captured, and after that, you continue with a discovered check bishop to g3, which not only gives check to the king, but also creates a discovered attack against the queen on d1. This means that on the very next move, you will capture the queen, while at the same time keeping up the attack against white's exposed king. This is completely winning for black. But what if your opponent does not fall for this trap and avoids playing the move pawn to h3? For example, if they instead play the stronger move knight to c3, then the queen remains defended, and these tactics no longer work because, at the end of the line, the queen will be protected. In this case, you simply continue your development, because your main goal was always to be ahead in development, open lines for your pieces, and build up an attack later. Now, after they eventually play pawn to h3, you calmly retreat your knight back to e5. Following the exchange, you have a very active knight on e5 that exerts pressure on the pawn at c4. White will often continue with pawn to e3, and you just keep developing naturally. One straightforward approach is to castle. If white develops with bishop to e2, you then have several good options to increase pressure. One common move is bishop to e6, directly targeting the pawn on c4, which will then be attacked twice and force white to respond. However, an even stronger move is queen to g5, attacking the pawn on g2. This puts white in serious danger because the queen not only threatens the pawn on g2, but also lines up against the rook in the corner, creating immediate threats that can tear apart white's position. The natural defensive move for white would be to castle, but even this runs into trouble because you can then play bishop captures pawn on h3. At this point, white's position quickly collapses. The pawn is pinned to the king and cannot move, while your bishop is applying dangerous pressure. White's king side is falling apart, and the attack is overwhelming. If instead white tries to avoid these problems earlier with a move like pawn to g3, then you simply adapt your plan and continue building activity with your pieces. What I would recommend in this position is to retreat the black queen to the square g6. By doing this, the queen is no longer exposed to unnecessary attacks, and you keep it safe while maintaining pressure. Although, in theory, white is still fine here, in practice it is much easier to play this position with the black pieces. The black bishop is already aiming at the white pawn on the square h3. This creates a problem. If white castles kingside, they will immediately lose that pawn. If white chooses not to castle, then black has the simple developing move bishop to e6, which at the same time targets the white pawn on c4. After that, the move rook to d8 comes naturally, lining up against the white queen on d1 and creating an x-ray threat. At this point, white often struggles to find a clear plan, which is why, even though white has an extra pawn, black enjoys strong attacking chances and easier play. Now, going back to the main Budapest gambit structure, you may wonder, what if white tries to defend their pawn on the square e5 by overprotecting with pawn to f4, making sure that the black knight cannot win it back? At first sight, this looks solid, but in fact, it is a serious mistake. After the move bishop to c5, the weaknesses in white's position become obvious. White is left with a number of weak squares, and once again, white falls behind in development. For example, if white tries to cover everything with pawn to e3, black could capture immediately, but an even stronger move is pawn to d6. The point of this move is not to rely on a single tactic, but instead to keep ahead in development and open the e-file. 
Later, after castling Kingside, the Black Rook will come to the square e8, which will put enormous pressure on White's position. In many cases, White plays queen to f3 to defend the central pawns. Black then castles Kingside, and Rook to e8 follows quickly, adding even more pressure. White may hope to push pawn to h3 to drive the Black Knight away, but there is no need to retreat. Instead, Black can strike immediately with Bishop takes pawn on e3. This works beautifully. If white recaptures, then rook to e8 comes with a devastating pin that wins the white queen. If white chooses not to capture the bishop, then the bishop remains extremely powerful, dominating the diagonal and preventing the white king from castling safely. So even though white is technically a pawn ahead, black has the better position, full of activity, attacking prospects, and long-term pressure. He will still play rook to e8. You know, in some variations, queen to a5 or queen to b6, your queen can go either way and create a lot of threats. Here, it is just really bad for white itself. Your opponent may decide, okay, I do not want to hold on to this pawn, I do not care, I just want to develop and grab the center, and they will play pawn to e4. At first, it looks pretty good for white. If you capture this pawn on e5, they may even follow up with pawn to f4 and build up the center. But we are not going to do that. Remember, our goal is to stay ahead in development and to attack. So instead, you still play this typical move, pawn to d6. That is how you react in many of these positions, because after the exchange on d6, that helps you bring your bishop out, creating threats against white's position. Now, strangely enough, it is hard to believe, but it becomes quite tough for white to figure out what to do here. If they play pawn to h3, the natural move trying to push away your knight, you have this strong reply, queen to h4. By the way, notice that in this particular position, knight to f2 sacrifice does not work immediately. If you try it, then after the exchange and bishop to g3, the difference is that you wish to capture their queen if they recapture with the pawn on g3. But instead, they can go king to e2 and maintain the guard of the queen. For that reason, these tactics do not work here, so let's take it back. If knight to f2 does not work immediately, you can simply reinforce this threat by bringing your queen out to h4, creating the checkmate threat of queen takes f2, supported by your knight. And what can white do? They cannot really capture your knight because it is pinned down to the rook. What else can white do? I mean, bishop to e3 is another bad blunder, because knight takes bishop on e3 simply wins the bishop due to the pin. White cannot recapture. It is really nice how trappy this whole variation is. Now, let us take this back. What if white tries pawn to g3, pushing your queen away? Then you do not shy away from sacrificing your bishop, because that completely opens up the king. It is quite easy to see that white is going to be in trouble very quickly, you attack the king, you can jump with your knight to f2 and attack both the queen and the rook. There are just far too many threats for white to handle. And finally, if white plays the move queen to f3, which looks like the most solid way to defend the pawn on f2, you simply ignore it and sacrifice your knight over there anyway. It turns out that after queen takes knight, you have the very strong follow-up bishop to g3, which wins the queen and keeps attacking the king. Really nice, right? I hope you see the power of the Budapest Gambit. Very often, whatever white does, they are just losing, and all of the natural moves are losing badly. Thanks for watching. See you in the next game.